Hello, sweet tooth there. I hope your day is going well. Hakuna Matata. I wanted to share a personal story of when I worked at McDonald's in crazy Las Vegas, gambling capital of the world, city of sin, and what happened there as of today does not stay there, as I'm going to share a few crazy stories that I have from a single year of working at McDonald's in Vegas. Las Vegas is fun to visit. But living there is a different story, especially when I took unemployment at a McDonald's in the city of Sin. This was not the wisest decision for me, but it was the only opportunity afforded to me at the time. And this is coming from a high honor school kid that was placed at the top of every, well, school I've been in with. And I also have a folder of awards that are useless to me right now. Um, came... I was a kid that came from a specialized magnet high school called Advanced Technologies Academy. It was a school focused primarily on information technology studies for high school students. Correction, a high school for rich kids who had doctors and lawyers as parents. It wasn't pleasant for a kid like me from a less endowed ancestral background. I needed to take a break after that school. Uh, but I am thankful for the education as information technology is one of my favorite hobbies especially in professional enterprise environments on massive systems. Hard work but worth it for me. So I do enjoy information technology uh, in the career perspective. Anyways back in 05 I immediately upon graduation from this high school I decided to take a break from considering college. I had applied for many local employment positions online, online, but those were unfruitful as I expected, or as it should be expected. Online applications always seemed to get lost in the wind. There were many places I applied offline too. There was an interview I got from a local grocery store, Albertsons, that was given at the same time my brother had an interview with them. So the hiring manager decided both of us should come at the same time. And while I was in that interview with my brother, he was picked. I was not. The assistant store manager indicated I'm too quiet and reserved. Of course, because I'm not really a very expressive, outgoing person, more like what the stereotype of information technology portrays. I am more of an inwardly introvert person. In fact there are times that I uh, I decide to just hide indoors because I really just don't want to go outside and see people. That level of introvert. So I understood but I was a bit frustrated. I figured well McDonald's was my best shot at employment and everybody comes at this point and whenever they look for a career opportunities and they cannot get them they'll pretty much look and say well I might as well go for a Starbucks I might as well go for McDonald's it just kinda gets stuck in your head that way so I called a nearby McDonald's to see the status on my application that I had sent in a week earlier but they didn't know anything about any application indicating well they indicated to come in and fill out another one this happened repeatedly three times which I thought was odd and on the third time an assistant manager that was there I had not previously seen she pulled me to the side uh, interviewed me right there said I was hired then before I knew it I was changing clothes in the bathroom and watching work orientation work orientation training videos the same exact day and this this assistant manager um, she was actually really nice. I really did like her. And I thought to myself, like after I got hired and I was just sitting there watching an orientation video on the same exact day, you know, that I brought in the job application, I was like, so this is a fast food hiring, this is fast food hiring, huh? I was like, okay, it's weird, but I went along with it. Those training videos did not indicate correctly what the job entailed. They indicated happy team members, and I mean overly happy like insane happiness to work at McDonald's, ear to ear grinning, plenty of co-workers to help which is not always the case, 
Uh, one case in point is they said you'd have a runner that helps package orders for customers so the cashiers and order takers can do what they need to do. N um, and the runner would take the packaged food and give it to the customer. The order takers and the front, um, the cashiers, wouldn't have to, like, multitask, apparently. But, uh, that does not happen. I don't even know... I didn't even, even at the time, I didn't believe the orientation video. I was like, that's not going to happen. I'm going to be forced to do, you know, practically anything that needs to be done right at the exact moment. You know, not to mention one of the orientation videos <laughs> indicated a dedicated person to only fries. Somebody that only goes on fries to, you know, just do fries. Um, I mean, maybe that happens at some places, but I've never, I've never seen it. I think it does happen at certain locations, and I, but I don't know, I've never seen it before. But you know, this is how you spot a corporate person's view of field work or individual store work. They don't work at the individual stores, they sit in a corporate office location, and boardroom meetings that come up with these marketing ideas and training videos and whatnot. They have no idea what happens with the low-end work. They, I don't know. It's like they either didn't work at McDonald's or they forgot what it actually is like to work at McDonald's or they just plain ignored what actually happens at McDonald's. Ugh, really weird, man. So anyways, I started as a janitor being instructed for four days straight by an individual from Eastern Europe, and he did indicate he was from Eastern Europe, the proper way to mop circular motions clockwise fast, but not too fast. If I didn't do it right, I was instructed again with the broom forcibly taken from me. <laughs> but the weirdest thing is that the one other janitor there during evening hours was an old white lady I'm rather sure was high on drugs every time she was there. She always had the jitters and was smacking her lips. And when you're in Vegas long enough to know when you're when you're in Vegas, you know when someone is on drugs. I mean not just old and mentally handicapped, when they're high on something. You know it. But anyways, there was a uh, there was a time a couple of weeks later I was told to clean up kid puke in the play place, the kid plastic playground, you know, area. Um at the top of it, inside let me, let me tell you, that it is quite difficult to get in there. It's sized for a kid. Why was I sent in there? I, well, I did. I, I did go in there. And uh, after struggling to get up to the top, doing work I don't think I should have been doing, wiping maple syrup and pancakes, splattered puke pretty much all over the place, lo and behold, the manager calls to me from down below asking why I'm up there and what am I doing. The same person that told me to go up there. Well, they can't hear me yelling from inside the plastic container, and they then they yell back that they need me immediately on as front-end cashier. Uh, and you gotta, th and you gotta think to yourself at this moment, oh man, were you just promoted? Maybe. I only got five dollars an hour at that time, so. Uh, whether I was janitor, front-end cashier, or drive through cashier, or... They didn't even let me cook food, to be honest. But, you know, if you want to call that a promotion, be my guest. <laughs> and I was chosen to be front-end cashier because I speak English, and the Mexican co-workers specifically indicated they couldn't, wouldn't, want to take orders from the English-speaking customers. So I then started being on front counter as a cashier. Soon the janitor position was reduced to only the high uh, old lady at night to work three hours. So I had to clean the lobby and play place area in my off time anyways. Talk about cheap labor. So I started to see the strange and abusive work that is co customer service. Where no matter what the customer does or says, you just have to take it with a smile. Grin and bear it. The customer is always right. 
Even if the customers don't speak English, which circumvented the reason for why the Mexicans in the back insisted I go on front counter. There was an old man that literally made up his own language asking me if he could have Zutu. I said, I'm sorry, sir, what, what, what was that? A Zutu. Give me a fucking Zutu. God, what do they teach kids these days? Back in World War II, they knew what a Zutu was. I stood there a bit confused and inwardly annoyed, but tried to figure out, while getting yelled at, what he's asking for. Uh, my shift manager came up. He took the uh, register from me and says, Coffee. He's asking for coffee. I was a bit dumbfounded and I was like, Right. Like I'm supposed to know what this old man wanted in his made-up language. Which he tried to do again later by coming up asking for something else like Frio or something. Which was, um, I believe it was the coffee creamer. If I remember correctly. So, but this time I had called my shift manager in the back up to the front to see what this man meant. I don't know, it seemed like this guy, this old man... Not only needed coffee in their day, but sanity pills, you know, to promote linguistic sanity. But something else that's strange that happened was when a man approached me with hands inside his underwear. I took his order when th then he attempted to pay with a credit card pulled out of his underwear. Again, his underwear. And I mean inside. It reeked. I could smell it a mile away. I should have called the manager over, but for some reason or another, maybe due to being desensitized from the job at the time, I pinched the card between my pointer and thumb to run it. I gave it back to the man that was now oddly grinning. He was oddly grinning when I did this, and I, I did to this day, I am not sure why, but I could only imagine. And I immediately washed my hands after he left, like... I didn't really have access to the bathroom, but there was this sanity water uh, bucket thing, and I was just, like, sanitizing my hand as much as I could. I don't know. The guy could have had STDs or something. Uh, I don't know why I didn't just get the manager. But anyways, I was glad to never see the guy again. There was one time... Uh, we had a man decked out in an American flag logo outfit head to toe smoking a cigarette in the middle of the dining lobby where kids could see him too because the play place had a uh, window to the, you know, the area declaring his freedom to do so, threatening to shoot anybody who had a gun, anyone trespassing his American rights, even when the cops forcibly removed him. Yes, there was plenty of kids present in that play place and uh unfortunately um i did make friends i made friends with a homeless man <laughs> believe it or not i made friends with a homeless man when my other co-workers didn't want to deal with him i think because of the rancid smell emanating from him especially when talking but he's a human just like any of us and i think i bonded on a mutual level because at one time my family had been close to homelessness ourselves, and I have lived in an actual ghetto. Um, not the kind of ghetto that people joke about, uh, an actual one. An actual one that I, no one in their right mind would ever, ever joke about. I was there. And we were, we were very close to homelessness at one time, so I think I, I think I bonded on him on, on a certain level, because I, I knew. I, I I knew what that felt like. Anyways, I had a bit of a laugh when at one time he was given a full pizza box while holding out his help needed sign on the nearby curb and my co-workers were jealous. Again, my co-workers who were paid minimum wage and somewhat able to afford a living cost were jealous of a homeless man getting a box of pizza. We even got food like given to us it was like uh if you worked more than six hours you were giving like a meal up to five dollars but no more so any if it was more you would have to pay it out of pocket something like that i laughed at this 
because he noticed the jealousy and was showing off at an attempt of humor, biting each slice with a smile directed at my coworkers and they were I couldn't I can't ever tell if they were legitimately mad or <laughs> or just jokingly mad. I, I could never tell. But it it was it was really funny. Um another experience with homeless uh was that we did have a homeless lady at night come in begging for food. Uh, she was starving and crying endlessly. Uh, the shift manager comped, gave free, uh, two fish fillet sandwiches. It was uh, really sad. That one is uh, more of an experience that, I don't know, like, it's an experience that's really sad that you would have to be there to know how it felt. It was, uh, I don't know, something you just kind of don't want to remember happened. Um, we had people come come in on a regular basis with gangbang language. Actual game members as regulars, which was common in this area. <laughs> There was an actual ghetto neighborhood nearby, after all, where a white gang, predominantly, constantly fought with a Mexican gang. And that Mexican gang fought with a black gang, and that black gang fought the white gang. So we had three gangs in the local neighborhood, all different racial, you know, origins, that would always fight each other. Real stand-up people you trust your family to, right? And, yes, there were bloody violence and violent activity with plenty of sirens to be heard on a continual basis. I mean, just on and off, like... Speaking of violence or hate in general between races of different color... Racism. I saw all kinds in the uh, one single year I worked at McDonald's. I rode my bicycle to work and, for some reason, would park and lock it up across the parking lot at a nearby grocery store, as opposed to, which I later found out was totally fine, that I could just bring my bike into work and put it in the back. I don't even know why I didn't ask, and I parked at this grocery store, but it was a bad idea. Two Mexicans in a white truck tried to kill me. Yes, attempted murder was part of my work experience. Not only this job, but my next one as a porter, a groundskeeper at an apartment complex. These two, these two tried to run me over two times, and I mean literally swerved to try and hit me dead on with windows rolled down calling me all sorts of abusive names in Spanish. They didn't think I understood. <laughs> I ran for it to get inside my workplace. I don't know why I didn't call the cops. I really don't. But it, to be truthful, I am pretty hard in myself in some regards, and would be, it would be in their best interest not to get out of that truck to come after me. I wouldn't take it. I have been around the physical block once or twice already. I may not be able to fight as well like my brother, but I will defend myself tooth and nail. So, I mean, that is probably why I didn't call the cops, which is a very, a very dumb reason. But anyways, guess who walks in the doors to my work ten minutes later while I'm on front counter trying to recollect, recollect my thoughts on what that was about and hoping it ended. The two racist Mexicans eyeing me with a simple smile, speaking all kinds of nasty things on their approach, that my shift manager at the time, my literally gay Mexican cowboy shift manager, whom, whom I always had fun with, Romeo, immediately took over the register. His name is actually Romeo. Like I said, gay Mexican cowboy named Romeo. He was and is one of the best guys I'd met. He took their food order and delivered it. At the same time in do doing this, he repeatedly told these two to stop trying to bother his worker. The whole time they eyed me, and honestly I think I should have gone off to the back, but I didn't. I seem to recall the one Mexican with gray hair carrying a gun on his side. Thankfully they uh they left after a while. I asked my shift manager what that was about. He uh he eyed me for a second, then looked to the doors of the restaurant, paused a good while, and said in a very sad voice Uh rude rude people, nothing to worry about. On another, on, um, 
let me think. Yeah, we had a corporate consultant from the McDonald's corporate office that would help the uh, franchise owner with day-to-day -day operations uh, in her three sister locations. Uh, one of these locations being one of the sister, you know, restaurants in the local area. Uh, one day, he enthusiastically informed our store that he found a very good manager from a back alley. A back alley in a sketchy neighborhood. His name, was, his name was Byron. He was black, a racist, and did drugs in the bathroom when he should have been working. Constantly hit on my mom when she visited, despite him already having a white wife he'd already been cheating on. So, one day I had a black customer that tried to hustle me out of $20 pulling a scam where one will ask for specific amounts of, of change after an order and when counted and given to them, would give the money back, changing their mind, asking for a different amount while the cash drawer is open. They repeat this process until you're not sure the original amount and thus get hustled in giving back more. I saw what he was doing, so I called for Byron closing the cash drawer with the original bill now in hand. Byron didn't like me and had indicated so many times simply because I was white, and he did say it was because I was white. And because he doesn't like white people, yet goes for white women, for if that makes sense. He ignores me for a good three minutes, with me staring at him, be until begrudgingly he came over. I hand over the customer's original bill, explaining the situation and the hustle that happened so he's aware. Byron nods and begins to deal out the change for the customer instead of simply telling them to go away. The customer begins to hustle him. Byron notices that, w that when it happens and doesn't budge, saying he did, in fact, give the correct change. The customer scoffs, looks to the side, then to the other black man. Man, you be bullshitting me. You know you ain't giving me the right amount. Agree with the crack again, huh? What are you, a white lover? The solid expression that ensued on Byron's face afterward was absolutely priceless. Yes, a racist black man was told he was a white lover and could not prove to this other guy any different. I laughed for days at the irony of that. <laughs> at a later time, I was moved to drive through cashiering. It was actually kind of nice and calm. Uh, much calmer than the uh, front counter cashier, and I, I'm still not sure how, because 80% of the uh, customer traffic comes through the drive through so I was dealing with 80% more customer interaction, which you would think is much, much, much worse, but apparently it's better than being on the front counter somehow. Uh, also, there was... Also got annoying with the kids screaming in the play place next to the booth, which would uh, give me a headache, and I really had to close that door sometimes. I had a racist old white man, too, in a red truck with a license plate of Trucks 1 with an X instead of CK, who would come through the drive through every week. It somehow always coincided with the day's Romeo, our gay Mexican cowboy shift manager was working. What would happen is the old guy would drive through my win drive through to my window while I was on drive through cashiering. He'd remark a few racist comments about the Mexicans working there until Romeo would inevitably run all the way across the store to my window and both would fight in words until the old man leaves every single time. And this happened maybe, I don't know, 50 plus times. I kind of learned after a while to just back away from the register when I saw Romeo do his run. So Romeo doesn't like push, try to push me out of the way. Uh, I just let them just do, do what they're doing. I didn't really like the old, I, I really didn't like the old white man's atti attitude. And neither did his wife on occasion, who was sitting beside him, telling her husband to stop it.
Now that I think about it, there was this other time working drive through cashier uh, when a taxi came through with a drunk man in the back seat. The man in the back seat had won it big at the local casino, carrying some of his earnings in a bucket on his lap. A bucket full of quarters. Which I think he had a few other buckets on the floor next to him, if I remember correctly. He decided to give me a tip by dipping both hands into the bucket of quarters and throw it all at me as hard as possible, which stung more than I thought possible. I blocked a lot of it with my face. With my face. I blocked a lot of it, uh, you know, blocked my face so they wouldn't hit me there when I noticed it was about to happen. The taxi driver and the man laughed and they quickly drove off to my bewilderment. Quarters were absolutely everywhere, inside and outside of the booth. Um, so these are, these are those past experiences that come to mind at the moment. Um, and keep in mind, this all happened in one single year of working at McDonald's. I mean, I have a lot of experiences from that crazy place and that crazy city, like, Las Vegas, I don't ever want to live there again. Um, let me know what you think about this you know, or any other experiences you've had in the comments below. McDonald's or other, you know, otherwise. If I remember anything else from McDonald's or somewhere else, I'll be sure to provide a follow-up video. So, I want to thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. I hope you have yourself a good day, and this is Sweet Tooth, signing off.